I have two different reses now. One is requires 10k worth, and the other requires 5k. But the 10k one skips all of the restorations, doesn't it? I think so. Is it resurrect instead of raised dead? Yeah. Yeah. But we well we have the uh, you have the rod though don't you the staff of it doesn't have resurrection or anything on it no but it has restoration though oh yeah, yeah 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 I see what you mean so if you don't have 10k worth of stuff you want to sacrifice that's that's well, there. I, I do have the thoracic nanite chambers which is worth like 16k I think I might be overkill though for that. Trying to see if I've got. Yeah, I really don't have anything because uh, I, I stripped down all my extra stuff uh, way back when. Yeah, I don't have any wands of it. I thought maybe I did, but. Then I got the two VR helmets, but. Uh, I mean, the two the two VR helmets would pay for it. They're five thousand each. But they're tech, and you would have to sell them. No, you said because he's Bri, he can he can offer. Oh, up a you're just sacrificing him. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He can just sacrifice those. That's true. Do. Are we okay without the VR helmets or are those extras? Oh. How much gold did you need? Sorry. Ten k total of um, sa sacrifice of uh, tech to sacrifice. You see, the thing what? is, is you've noticed that every couple nights, Croctaw uses the heck out of the VR helmet. <laughs> yeah, she would want to keep one of them. I got. Oh shit, that's weightless. That means I didn't bring it with me. Never mind. I've only got 200 gold with me. All good. I'm looking up my stuff. Well, we could always go to the mock tree and he could give us the gold or whatnot if the first stuff that we need for the resurrection. Huh? I mean, no. if, if we have to sell the VR to get. or sacrifice it to raise the profit, it's fine. Cassandra Lee whispers from Nomcast backpack, but you were almost to level four. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just I'll just steal it back. Wait, he's sacrificing it. Fuck. Yeah, it's good luck stealing it back from Bri. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I have a Arfad's couple. I like a little a little nervous about it. But she feels guilty about Nomcast too. So. I have a couple of random things I could sacrifice to, like, I have never used a glazer. And that looks like it's 4,200 worth. Oh, well, let's, maybe we can go to the mockery, see what they um, have for trade and stuff. Um... Yeah, at some yeah, point. I don't have any tech on me. I don't either. All of my tech is inside of me. Hmm. Well, aren't priests supposed to be self sacrificing? Yeah. I was going to say it. I'd be just curious what season is it? in the game it's usually pretty static in numeria due to its climate but yeah it is actually late winter early spring similar to real life all right that's sweet it's just not been three years like real life right <laughs> And, uh, you said yeah. that the, oh, go ahead. I can, it looks like I can sacrifice a glazer and a pipe bomb. <laughs> and I would, like, it would be a what the f They said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Just fucking weaponry. I'm weapons giving you all I got, me goddess. It's the weapons of our enemies. <laughs> the 
The one who's the ones who seek to subjugate tech. Is that an acceptable sa um sacrifice? Of which spell are you going for? Raise dead or the other one? I was just gonna do raise dead since we have the staff of get rid of all the thing. Sure. Yeah, you think that'll be enough? Hell yeah. Since I've never shot this before, just once. See how it goes. Hell yeah. And now the spell failed because uh, he's devalued the gun. <laughs> yeah, right? now it's not worth enough. That was it. Depreciated, depreciated because it's been used. Yeah, it's like that um, scene from Lord of War. Now you have to buy it. It's been used. <laughs> No, I was thinking more along the lines if you drive a car off the lot, you immediately lose 20% of its value. That's right. That's right. You destroy the value. Mm -hmm. Where be Rage Dad? Here it is. Wait a minute. I'm is that all the noise Ray's Dead makes? Apparently. It's just the bones rattling. That is uh... insufficient. Hang on. Where is it? Ray's... We're fancy these days. We don't settle for just a couple of dice rattling around for someone to come back to life. This is a momentous event. Your deaths are celebrated, especially by me. I love it. I love killing you. So... We're going to have to do that again. Okay, let it rip, Alfred. Anime Ted, you fucker, Tokala. playing before you didn't hear the first one well now the recording has a chorus of choruses <laughs> there we go nomcath comes back to life i assume unless he's got better things to do no he comes back whatever realm he was galloping through he hears ulfred's voice and <clears throat> turns and sees Ulfred's hand reaching out to grab him, but Ulfred can't seem to see you. And you take his hand and are pulled back to life. And the first thing you notice is sort of dust in your eyes and up your nose, and you're laying in a dirty alley, and it smells like dirt and filth. Distance, a little quick waft of sewage blows by, and you blink the dirt out of your eyes and see your companion standing around you. Welcome home, good. Welcome home, good buddy. Tokala's piling rocks on you, apparently. <laughs> you gotta make a cairn. <laughs> this is what you do when people die. At least he's not setting you on fire or putting you putting you out of your misery the way he almost did to McGinnis. No, we established early. I built cairns for people I love. That's right. That's right. Hey, <sighs> wait a sec. Eldrin didn't get a cairn. <laughs> Wait, he a had a huge oh, cairn. He got an entire hang on. tower worth. Hold the we phone. We collapsed the whole freaking tower on top of him. True. Yeah, wow. The most hated dungeon ever. And Krakta is still a. It's still a cockroach. Yeah. 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 Feel it's better that life, way. Man. Yeah. She seems comfortable yeah. in this form. Don Cat comes back and after he catches his breath for a second, it's like, thank you, Alfred. Uh, I guess that means uh, four lives left. <laughs> oh no, I can do that as long as we have the the resources left. 
Well, maybe, but, you know, I want to save a couple of lives for when I retire. I suppose. He's going to need all those extra lives when he remarries a much younger woman. Oh, damn. <laughs> hey, when you got the wealth, right? Hey. <laughs> and adventurers are always rich. By the way, you're fully healed. Thank you. Uh, did we get him? Alright, we did that. Oh, good. Uh, uh, that probably wasn't my smartest move, but I didn't want him getting away. Uh, well, you tried. That's what matters. I, I thought heart... it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Your heart was in the correct spot. Yeah. At least until it got burnt out. <laughs> Ow. Okay, what do we do from here? Um. So it's morning now, right? They waited it till morning is... to do this? They've rested, so it's probably like four in the morning. The sun is slowly creeping up in the east. I say we. Wait a few more hours, let the sun come up, let normal crowds get out, and then I will take you guys to meet our contact. Uh, the whatever the hell. I've just the mockery. The mockery. mockery. Yes. yes, thank you. Oh, yes, the Macarena. Oof. Uh. All right, Toby. If that guy I ever gets in a fight, it, it has to be the Macarena now. Mm -mm, mm -mm. This hype track has to be Macarena Negative. now. There we go. Cro we'll just sing it. Crocodile song. will just do it live. Heck yeah. There we go. We'll just... um, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> and then get pulled off of YouTube because. Yeah, we'll get oh, demonetized. Yeah, that was such you guys a great to, transition. <laughs> you guys have to learn the words. So. Hey, Macarena. Oh, hey, right. Macarena. Yeah, we know that. We know that part. Right. I have no idea the words. <laughs> Doesn't she say it's like some dude's name? The girl's singing about. Dale a tu cuerpo alegría, Macarena. Que tu cuerpo es para dale alegría, Macarena. That's it. Or cosa buena. There it is. Dale a tu cuerpo. Hang on. I had to look it up. Hey, macaroni. Yep, dale a tu cuerpo, alegría macarena. There you go, memorize that. If you guys see that, this is a track. It sounds like a spell. It kind of does, yeah. I'll put it in chat for you. Let's summon this dude. Let's make a better ship. Only if Tokala does the dance in those boots. You gotta take a level of bard instead of leveling up. Yes, just destroy do, your character for this meme. <laughs> do the Macarena very slowly as the summoning <laughs> ritual. <laughs> so, uh, do you guys know that the guys that did that song have been, get, had, have, had been together for a long time? Now is their one hit wonder? Uh, not, not surprised. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Now don't you worry about my boyfriend. That's a part I was trying to remember. <laughs> Where is that? Don't want him. Couldn't stand him. Yeah. That song was unfortunately on the radio a lot when I was a pizza guy. So. And again, so was bl uh, Blue. Oh, yeah. From iPhone 65. Then you got Barbie Girl from Aqua. Yes, I'm a dude. Yes, indeed, I'm a guy. I'm a dude, I'm a guy, I'm a... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, a whole, there's a whole new version of that, that song out now. Well, you oh, know Lord. what? The Car I, I, I doubt any of you are listening to the Carrion Crown recordings, but that group is obsessed with uh, this song. Scatman! <laughs> yep. world! I'm a Scatman! <laughs> Yep, I know that song. <laughs> yep. Now that's some spellcasting. 
<laughs> that's quicken spell. <laughs> yeah, that's what I should, every time Olvrin does a quicken spell, I should throw in some scat man. There you go. Vitorino. Yeah. Yeah, that's the one. All right, so we've covered resurrecting the rogue and the lyrics to Macarena. What next? Okay, I'm on job. <laughs> Uh, you want to meet up with the mockery? Yeah, uh, let's give it a few hours, though. Like I said, it'd be a little less uh, visible if we go in during kind of like expected times for people to show up. Okay, what are you guys going to do to pass the time? <laughs> obviously, we bring out the song for the next four hours. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. I mean, this house is rocking before sunrise. <laughs> our, our new mission? Start the longest conga line in the city. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> yeah, let's do it. No, no, no. I was thinking. I was just thinking the ultimate garage band. <laughs> I think I mean, none of us have any levels in Bard, so yeah, I think all of us should just take Bard this level. I do just think we all have the, a, uh, we we do have a uh, a point in perform from uh, we do. We do. That's what I was gonna say. That's yeah. true. That's not a totally sing. wasted level. Everyone in Iron Gods that was there for that is a singer. Oh. It's true. Actually, I do not have a point. Yep, so... Yeah, I think you were Eldred yeah. at that point. Yeah, Procta and Luna yeah. don't have it, but the rest of us do. I don't have yeah, a point. perform yet. oratory for some reason. I have no fucking idea why. But... <laughs> <laughs> well, just over at the GM's pub saying, eh, I don't know, the campaign went a couple of years, and as soon as they hit 13th, they all went barred, and it just fell apart. I don't... <laughs> I don't know what happened. I killed the rogue like you normally do. Everything seemed going fine. As is tradition. As is yeah, I just, tradition. I named the character the mockery. And, just and that was it. Everything. Derailed the whole campaign. Just stay away from that word. Stay away from that song. That's right. Alright, so yeah. I, I would do like... Uh, I don't know. Is there anything you feel like we need to do during that time? Or are we just going to kill time? I mean, I, I so badly want to make a hurricane and an epidemic mm. in the city. <laughs> Hold on. But I can't, so don't ask me what to do. Oh, actually, I can do um one thing that might be useful. Uh, I can send out, like, insect spies um, to look around for us. I don't know if it's, like, oh, actually, they can't go that far. Let me see. Here, what do you? How do you guys interpret this spell? Like, does that mean they can only go 25 plus 5 feet for two levels away from me, or I can summon them that far away from me? I feel like I should be able to get, like, four cockroaches and just, like, send them out to explore the city Pretty sure the like an hour. Pretty sure the range on it is um, for when you... Um, specifically for when you cast it, where you want to place it, it can be that far away from you. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Although the duration's not that long on this. Yeah, Cockroach is probably pretty slow. Mm -hmm. So make a flying insect. They do have a stealth check of 18 plus half your caster level, which is like Nomcath level stealth. Yeah, and they yeah, can't fly. <laughs> so like, yeah, I could send out just if we have downtime, I can send four cockroaches in different directions to and I think I can, like, watch through their senses. Yeah. So I could just be exploring the blocks around us or something. Well, it's if you guys think it's time. worth it. It's one at a time. You'd have to you'd, you'd have to switch between them. Yeah, if I could do that. I could yeah. Switch around and see if I... It says anything. as insect spies. You only... Only if you want to see through their eyes do you have to spend your own action. Otherwise... You issue different orders to different insects. You spend a separate standard action for each set of orders. Insect in physical contact with you can answer simple questions about what it's observed at a rate of one question per round. Uh, can't repeat speech. Plus 16 it, bonus on perception checks. Yeah, they're real perceptive. For example, insect sending a load. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Oh, no, no, that, that was... Yeah, that's the notice they're climbing on them. <laughs> yeah. Because they can climb onto cre other creatures. This is... Um, yeah, I mean, do we have a feeling that this area is worth us exploring the dead block, or do we think it's just kind of useless? Nomcat scattered it out pretty hard earlier, earlier. and so did... I did. Uh, the buildings okay. are abandoned... And... All right, I'll, I'll save it for like an area we're less familiar okay. with them later. Yeah. Tolka's got long strider. I have this whole time. It's the only way I move thirty feet. <clears throat> I have to cast it every single day. The I did. Karkta, I think that spell is really useful if you went somewhere and wanted to surveil. Like, or mm. to, or if the party's in somewhere doing something, you said it. Hide yourself nearby in uh, bug form, send out your bugs, and then like a guard patrol comes along or something else comes along, your bugs would see it immediately and not be detected by it. So it's like a good early warning system. Allows you to sort of stake out an area. It's really like cool. you probably would you would have used that during the uh when we were looking for the entrance to this place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Weird ass druid shit. Um, any ideas? I mean, we did some flying around to try to find this safe safe house. Any other ideas how we might be able to discover this thing? Well, we're, we're working with the um, uh, the mockery. And, you know, they can have they can we'll have safe houses we can use if we need to move someplace closer. Yeah, I'm he just thinking. He said he said he's willing to share everything he knows about what's going on in the city. So, well, my only thought was if we find his safe house, what what uh, what loot might be in it would be helpful to us point. in the long run. That's a good point. And the problem is, unfortunately, we don't have a very good uh, description. It's going to be a, a a good chunk of luck just to find it. Can you hear a? Ahem, from your backpack, Nomcath. Uh, you know you're allowed to come out and around when we're just here in the, in this little safe house, Cassandra. You don't have to stay in my backpack the whole time. She barely floats out of it, and you see her face is streaked with black makeup. It looks like she has been virtually crying. She says, "You were dead for three hours. It was the longest three hours of my life." <laughs> uh. <laughs> Uh, We've I'm been sorry, friends for three weeks, and I can't imagine life without you. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, Cassandra. I, I, I did take some risks, really. I, I, it was probably riskier than I should have been. I was just thinking of making sure he didn't get away. I, I'm She's sorry. shaking her head and looks very angry at you for a second, and then she, like, looks off to one side as if something distracts her, and she goes, So anyway, I've been ripping through. You guys are trying to find Theris's hidey hole, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she says, I don't have the exact location, but I have everything, every memory I sifted through and searched everything I have on him and put together a composite of all the times he went to or from it, I think. So I have a sort of neighborhood blueprint. That'll definitely help us out. Is it something that you can share with us? Like if I plug in with the VR helmet, you can show me? Or are you going to mm -hmm. have to actually kind of... Okay, good. That we... It'd be a lot easier than you having to float around and, and look. Uh, all right. Um, Yeah, yeah give me a second. Kind of stretches, because even with the healing, he just feels stiff and sore. <laughs> and then he'll get the VR helmet out and plug in. Okay. Of course, you know, Luna will be standing watch while he's doing this so that we don't get fucking surprised by bullshit. Yeah. Oh. Nomcath, you are taken on sort of a virtual flyover of Starfall, and is Nomcath trained in survival checks? Yes, I am. Roll it. That was one of my things, remember? Mm hmm, mm hmm. That's up there. Hold on. I got a drag. 
No, I'll worry about doing it later. Hmm. You are looking at the city from above the way you guys saw it when you flew in in mm -hmm. the Windwalk spell, and more recently when Croctaw has flown through it as a insect. Sandily has some copies of Croctaw's memories of flying through the city as a roach. And she has composited those things together and pinpointed, she says, it is in North Central Killbox, close to the Street of Lights. This is where every time Theris went to this area, I noticed that, according to his memories, he was more nervous, more cautious, and looked over his shoulder a lot and was very agitated. Okay, uh, that definitely narrows it down. Uh, we can look there more. Uh, do we want to do that before uh, going out to, to speak to the mockery, or we want to do that afterwards? Mm, some mockery on the way, or should we do Sorta. that first? Uh, mockery is more west, but on the same north-south level. Okay. Yeah, either one. They're, they're both worthy pursuits, I think. Um, it wouldn't hurt to... You know, the later in the day we go, the more the more natural it'll seem. So it, it wouldn't hurt to at least spend a few hours trying to search. Each crack will be the rest of using greater long finger. <laughs> Gotta show off. <laughs> yep. And I just realized that I should be using that. That's pretty smart. <laughs> Does it help with your flight? Yep. Plus, it 10 to, yeah, plus 10 feet to burrow climb. Plus 10 to other climb. modes. Yeah, for sure. No, it does. That's awesome. Do we have a buff for it? I do we do. Hang on a I second. already have a. Uh, I will put it on Roach Boy. My arch type gives me a ten foot bonus to flying too. It doesn't say enhancement. So this one inside. is a enhancement, and yeah, your yeah. archetype one should count as like a racial. It should stack. All right. Nice. So long strider greater is a buff you now have. Sweet. Thank you. Sadly, it doesn't stack with haste. Right. I'd never get it anyway. So. <laughs> That's true. That's because you're always out of position, I believe. That's the answer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's, uh, let's at least spend a few hours seeing if we can find this safe house. Okay. It gives us something to do while we're killing time. Okay. So you guys leave the dead block. What is our disguise protocol? I think I heard Tokala say he puts the saw back in Alfred's bag of holding. Yep. yep. Just oh. carrying my big sword now. Yep. So. Yep. yep. Take no your check off, people. Luna puts her her uh, headgear back in the in the bag, but keeps the uh, the, the fancy the fancy longsword or katana. You don't want to hide that? It could get questions asked, even though it is technically legal. Yeah, she'll, she'll take the chance. Okay. Uh, if I need a bigger, better disguise? You got a 22 total. Are you going to... Yeah. Who Who's getting the spell? Well, that was just for me. That was the sky okay. itself. Uh, does anybody need me to disguise them? Anybody else? Nope. nope. Uh, me. Dwarf man. Stop my oh, beard. Okay. Stop my beard. Oh, I've been I've been waiting for this. I got the perfect scissors. Wow. <laughs> oh, I was sure, sure. Him, him. There are beard scissors. Do not dare to use them for yeah. anything else, or he will stab you with them. <laughs> uh, can you? That one needs uh, skip prompts to me. Oh, disguise other does. Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> can you make him look like a beardless dwarf? <laughs>
I'll take a disguise uh, other as well. Okay. <laughs> can you also make him look like a beardless dwarf? <laughs> I can. <laughs> Or hairless cat, one of the two. Oh, well, he's already hairless. He got it all burned off. <laughs> oh, well, actually, now, yeah. now, it was a greater restoration spell. Get your hair back. Mom <laughs> right. cat looks like one of those uh, patchy alley cats. <laughs> cat with the mange. I got a oh, yeah. question uh, about wild shit. Um, it reduces my time? strength. So does that mean? So I, I'm like encumbered, huh? Oh, while well, you shape. are shrunken. Wild shaped, yeah. So I would have to. If I want to be able to wild shape into cockroach form. I should probably carry less. Um, I thought stuff is supposed to go into a non. I don't think it's supposed to encumber you when you're wild shaped. I don't think Foundry knows that you're wild shaped is the issue. Oh, okay. So we might have to just put a little thing on your buffs that. Buffs your carry strength while you're wild shaped to balance it out. Okay. I'll do that then. Yeah. So I'll just buff the carry strength by the amount that it decreases my yeah. actual strength. Is it ability checks? Miscellaneous carry strength. There it is. Buff ah, your okay. carry strength Sweet. while in cockroach form, so then you're light load again. Okay. Okay, awesome. There you go. Did you fix that spell, Toby? I thought so. Okay, let me try it. Nope. Awesome. Maybe I grabbed the wrong one. Disguise. Disguise. Disguise other. Details. Advanced. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I set it to the opposite of force skip. I set it to force display. Fixed. Okay. Uh, can you give me... Uh, no, I guess I don't need another one. Okay. Yeah. All right, Namcath, you are disguised, sir. Thank you. Anybody else? Going once. Nope. nope. Going twice. I've got the oath going. All right, I'm ready. Okay. If she puts her helmet on. Who the fuck is this? Who the fuck is what? What? If only we had ability, like an AI, uh, kind of like a deep fake, but we could do voices. It'd be funny to take the. Uh, you know, what the fuck is this? Uh, Soundbite for mm -hmm. Olbrin's uh, detect magic and change it to who the fuck is this? <laughs> Who can do that? Is open now. <laughs> Might be able to do that so if they've done that guy. There's a lot of celebrity voice deepfakes going around these days. What is that? <laughs> That'd be f what the fuck is that? I like change that. It. Yeah, imagine well, Arlie Ermi would be pretty pro popular to copy. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, he would be. It would be. Who is that? Who the fuck is that? <laughs> All right, who's leading? I will. I'm Kath? Okay. Yep. Are you sure you're up to it? You were just dead. I mean, <laughs> I, I do have a question. I I do have a I do have a uh, for when I use a large person. Okay. I do I do, I do need a sound effect for that. Okay. But I don't I know got, what I want. I know exactly the old Super Friends Apache <laughs> Chief. <laughs> I was thinking Super Mario when he eats a mushroom. Hell yeah! We'll think about that. Uh, to, to answer your question, Tokala, uh, th there's this old human saying I once heard. Uh, I got better. <laughs> the other one. Actually, what? I think in Army of Darkness, when Ash is growing his second head, and he goes, "Oh God, it's getting bigger." <laughs> I think that might be the one. Okay, so the party is disguised. Let us have a disguise check from the entire party. I've already got Olbrin. He got a twenty-two before his spell. 
Luna's doing oath. Oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> I'm glad I got the spell. Good thing you've got the spell. That's a 19 total. Very effective from Luna. I'm what wearing a brown cloak. To call on with a brown cloak. Uh, do I need to roll something else, Toby? Uh, you rolled a skill check on yourself, but you didn't roll disguise self. Oh, what's what's the, the mecha for disguise self? Uh, it's just yes. That would make sense. It might. Okay, that needs to be changed macro too. That uh, okay. skip prompts. It uh, puts you at thirty plus for your disguise check. All right. So it looks like the low is Tokala, disguised as an orc with a brown cloak. With a plus 16. Did he get a disguise other spell? No. Negative. Yeah. He's just a six. Okay. He looks like Tokala with a brown cloak. Okay. Well, now, now without a chainsaw. Just saying. Without, yeah, without chainsaw is an important I, step. I, I could be any orc. They don't know. The thing is, is he is a half orc warrior in a, a city full of warriors, so it stands out less here than he might elsewhere. So, what's the first destination? We're we going to the neighborhood Cassandra Lee outlined, or we're we going to the Hall mm -hmm. of Nemeria. Okay. We're going to the neighborhood. That way we can give the day to kind of age a little bit so we're not so weird looking going into the mall. Okay. What do we do when we get to the neighborhood? Uh, I would say we just kind of uh, filter through, not not stay too bunched up, and just start looking for landmarks that look familiar from the what we were told about and what we were shown. Okay. Luna has no idea what she's looking for. So you can concentrate and make sure we're not drawing too much attention. Let's have a appoint someone to be the survival check, and those of you who have at least one rank in survival can assist. Uh, I believe Namcath probably has the best. Yeah, plus 11, me. I think I'm up to plus 18. For survival. So Krokta automatically assists. You don't even have to roll. Plus two from Krokta. And I guess I'll just keep percept uh keep what uh, look. Same. Any other assists? Oh, no, that careful. reminds um how much wisdom damage did I uh get healed? Oh, I think you get all of it. it. Okay. They dropped There's a greater mega. restoration. Yeah, they dropped a mega resto on you. So that would be uh, additional plus two, because I had four points of wisdom damage. So are they supposed to be rolling perception checks or survival checks? We're helping keep lookout. Lookouts roll <laughs> perception. I am looking for something else here. I rolled mine, I think, already. And there's mine. You. I am the Watch Dwarf. <laughs> Might be not be able to see over the wall, but once you put me on top of it, I, I see everything. <laughs> Here, I'll throw you in the air. How's that sound? can do that myself, Lass. If not, I can throw you 50 feet anywhere you want to go. Oh, I didn't even realize so that telekinetic thing, you can just toss people around. Mm -hmm. That's pretty cool. I can even you gotta toss... toss, toss the can... blood to Kala and shit. <laughs> I can even toss... Uh... Ulfred, and he can activate his boots and get like an 80 feet charge. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Namkath, as you walk through the streets with everybody and you're tracking this location and that location, um, you don't have a data jack yet, do you? No, I do not. Okay. I don't have any cyberware. I wanted it, but the only one I found to install it so far has been a robot, and so I can't do that. She, from your backpack, you hear her say, put the helmet on. Here in public? Use spells to, def to hide yourself and put the helmet on. Uh, is anybody watching? Currently, no. You guys are walking through kind of empty city streets just right around the crack of dawn. All right, and Viz needs to have it self changed. Skip prompts. Okay. All right. I think I your skip in. prompts in general is off, Josh. That's why they're all doing it. Normally. Oh, you I think it's it. a setting? I think it's a character-wide thing? thing. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, but as I do this to the spells, they now individually have their own for skip preference. Sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. It's just foundry fun. Um, at least we undid the damage to the macro mod. No um, shit. Okay, so what did you want to do? Invis? Yeah, invis numcath. Okay. Actually, that did roll, so... Yeah. Well, I had to go and click use, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that. Alright, okay. so once I go invis, I'll dig the helmet out of the bag of holding and, and put it on. Okay. You wire it into her? As you put the helmet on, the world goes black and the sound gets muffled. But then a moment later, you hear everyone talking, even shuffling. You even hear better than normal as you look around you and realize that you are listening to the helmet playing you the sounds that it can hear in the area around you instead of your ears hearing it directly. It's a weird sensation for you, like a headset with transparency or something like that. Actually, you use a perception-enhancing headset, so yep. you're sort of used to this sensation. But the blackness is replaced by a view of the city. The VR helmet is displaying the city, and you are on your feet. You are not immobilized like normal in VR. You are using, instead of VR, AR, augmented reality. And as you look around you, you are seeing names of streets that change. You are seeing the sun whip overhead couple times every you know every two or three seconds it whips overhead it's day it's night it's day it's night she is scrolling her memories of this city th through time at incredible speed actuated on your actual physical location and as you look around you are like you feel sort of guided and you start walking down different streets and as you are walking towards the City of Lights. Let me grab the Nomcath token here. I, I will say this since I'm invisible, yeah. uh, like every once in a while I'll like scrape my claws against something, scuff somewhere, make little noises or little things that the that people, uh, someone perceptive can kind of figure out where I am. Well, you can just <laughs> grab them. Like you could grab Olbrin by the arm or something and drag him. He could follow okay. you even though he can't see you. Um, yeah, we'll do it that way then. And you, just to make sure you don't have to think about that, you, yeah. they are represented, you can see them in the helmet, but they don't look like them. They look like other random people and they change constantly. Everybody around you changes constantly. And they look different. It's like you're going back, back farther in time and there's more natural construction of buildings. There's less smog. The sky clears up. You're decades in the past now. And... The sun just starts whipping overhead so fast that the sky is brightening and darkening like a strobe light. You actually kind of close your eyes, and she says, oh, sorry. And it just slams into place. The sun overhead, the city looking completely different. Much older, much simpler. 
much clearer. It, it looks more like Torch. Like the streets are clean, but a little dusty because it's Numeria. And there's not tech or junk laying around. There's not pollution. There's a lot of people moving around in the streets back and forth. And you see a woman in hooded cloak walk by and look right at you and wink. And you see Cassandra Lee's face and she keeps on walking and then disappears a few seconds later. It's just a fleeting little memory. She says, that was one of my past lives. So you lived here before? I've been here before. She Weird. says, that was when I came here on pilgrimage to meet Unity. It called to me from across the land and I traveled so far. It took me months to get here and I walked through this city and entered its lair and learned its true intentions. And the whole city goes dark for you again and she says, sorry, I got distracted for a moment. And the city pulls back up to present day. You immediately notice the smog again. And in the VR helmet, you hear current noises again. You hear the party milling around around you like, why is Nomcath walking in circles? This is not the direction we we're supposed to go. And she says, here are Theris's memories of this area. And you can roll the new survival check. You can still have the plus two from Croctaw. And she says she gives you a much smaller circle to look. All right, I think I got a better idea of where we're going. Come on, just just follow Olbrin. You realize you've been wandering through the streets. In fact, Olbrin, who you're hanging on to while you're in the helmet, can't see quite as effectively. He keeps you from bumping into people a few times. And it's a good 10 or 11 minutes have gone by. The invis is going to wear off. All right. Um... Do you need me to refresh? No. Yeah, Beth? go ahead. I think it'd probably be better if I keep this view. Uh, screwed up the macro. Screwed up the macro. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. There Hell we go. yeah. Okay. You turn invisible again, and you carry through the streets with this really very good 30 plus survival check with Croctaw's assistance. And Nomcath, you are getting close, and Cass, you hear her voice clearly speaking in your head through the connection say, turn left right now. And you duck down an alley that was just covered in street vendor carpets and other things that blocked your vision from going down there. You brush it all aside, walk down here, and you see in your VR helmet a memory of Theris, and you hear what you think was his voice. You've only ever heard his voice while talking to his screaming brain. But you hear him say, Hey there, Bill. And you hear a voice say, Hey there, Theris. And you see that he is nodding to a Starfall lawman on his left as the lawman unlocks what looks like the door to his house and goes inside. And Theris ducks to the down an alley to the right and then turns left and then kicks a homeless person who is asleep against his door and then kicks him again as the homeless man want, runs away and then says something under his breath and should have fireballed him idiot piece of trash and then he takes out a key and unlocks a door and you think you have the neighborhood narrowed down pretty tightly now let me see if I can find this correct map. Here we go. And the map is set for nighttime. Let me transition it to daylight. And on this map, you remember 
the lawman's house being on the left, and you went right and then left down a narrow alleyway, kicked a homeless person, and then you were there. All right, uh, Procta, uh, why don't you go ahead and scout ahead? We want to make sure there's not anybody hiding there, and I give him directions on, or her directions on how to find that door, and we kind of keep, the rest of it kind of keep going straight for now. Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, out of character, I might have missed like the directions to find the door <laughs> that were said. <laughs> right and left. Okay, right and the left. There, right, got it. Yeah. Your character's right, and then your character's left. Okay, let's get a perception and stealth from Krokta. Krokta, you may not want to try to enter the door. There may be some magic traps. Hmm. But he can probably like squeeze into a window or crack in the roof or something like that. Well, there he may set off traps regardless. Uh, so most traps um, are not going to be well. Of course, there are anti vermin traps, but you never know. Yeah, I'd say play it safe rather than blowing our chance at finding a safe house. Person sees me, Toby. They are asleep in the alley, in a pile mm -hmm. of trash. And then, Nopka, did you guys tell me a door, or take yeah, a left I, in an alley and then a door? I want to give you directions to the actual door. Yeah, but when you said right, then left was right, then the door's on the left, or right, and then go left down <laughs> the left down, left down the, the, the uh, <laughs> left turn, and then there's a door, right? Right, Toby? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Krakow thinks it's behind this, the sleeping guy, so she's going to... Is he, like, on the ground sleeping? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's draped okay. across a mound of garbage. He was okay. luxuriating. She'll fly over him mm -hmm. towards the door. Okay. There okay. is such a mountain of trash. Old boxes, old tattered cloths looks like something else underneath that wreckage and then it, there may be a door behind it but it's under literally maybe a, 150 or 200 pounds of trash that this man is sleeping on can I look for whether I think there's any type of I don't know if it's you're been small moved enough recently. to crawl past that okay you want to take a look at it do you roll me a survival check you're good at that uh, my perception would be better if I'm trying to look to see. I just wanted to see if it's. Uh, I guess you're right though for tracks. Okay. You buzz past him, land on what looks like a safe spot on the wall, and look around, just kind of take stock, and see that he is in tattered clothing himself, laying on a pile of tattered cloth that you think he's deliberately piled here, and. It's rather macabre, but underneath him is a bunch of shattered boxes, a half of an old rusted breastplate, and under that is, you don't think he realizes this, a human corpse in the fetal position with most of its flesh burned off. It looks like a dry, desiccated corpse. It is blackened. There is not really any flesh. It's mostly in skeletal form, and it is in like a fetal position up against the base of the door. Underneath the trash pile he's built. Um, what was the deal you made me that I can eat them as if it's like speak with dead? Is that a first level spell? Uh, I get rid of, whatever, level, it... whatever level speak with dead is, sure. Yeah, let me see. I just like doing it. But yeah, that's what I do. Spell. I will nibble on the dead corpse and see if I can get any inkling of how it's got there. Did I, uh, sorry, I don't know if I said it while pressing the talk, speak to talk. Oh, you said you want to uh, spend the spell slot? I'll probably just yeah. get that spell if you want. 
Um, uh, yeah, I'm just looking up what it is, but that's what I'll do. Yeah. Uh, we'll call it Speak with Dead, Go Cannibalism, exclamation. It's a third level spell for most people, so I'll just get rid of a third level that There I have. you go. That's fair. And you chew on this gnarly old corpse? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's a good idea, right? Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you, Crocta, do that? That's the spell you burn. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You chew on this corpse, and you have a mental image of yourself walking down this hallway, this alleyway in the dark and carefully moving aside a piece of trash, stepping over a sleeping homeless person in the dirt right in front of you, and approaching a door, which is the door that this corpse is up against, and drawing out a series of tools, laying out a unfolding thieves kit on the ground in front of you, next to you, to one side, to the left side, examining tools carefully, looking at the door, putting on this sort of headgear that creates a, a glow, a short range light glow, so, because this is a human person, so they can see. They look at the locks without touching it. They look at the top. You look at the, the sides, the bottom. You assess it the way you've seen Nomcath do, very thoroughly, very thoughtfully, very carefully. And you begin to figure out how to go at the lock. And the moment the first tool touches the lock, there is a sort of violence. Your, your view and your memory just shakes and your eyes blink unbelievably rapidly and you stare up at the sky and then slam your head into the stone wall next to you and crumble and you can't let go of the tools as you hang on to the door and you just feel just bolt after bolt after bolt of excruciating pain go through your entire body until you black out crumpled up in a heap at the base of the door with bolts of electricity still ripping their way through you over and over and over and the lights go out um yeah so after that vision she'll first she looked and saw um just to make sure you did you say there was cracks under the door though the door, uh, it is very well sealed. Okay. So she'll fly back to the group. Um, yeah, there's a man, homeless man sleeping um, on top of a, some trash and a corpse. Yeah, corpse died from a, a trap. The door is very heavily trapped. See, uh, Dom Kev? And very violently. You didn't get a chance to peek in? There's any way you can see inside? Not that door. It was sealed all the way uh, from, from ground up. No cracks. Right. <sighs> we gotta get rid of the, the homeless guy first, so uh, probably if you wanted to try to open that door. There's some other doors around it, but I, I doubt they go to the same place. Yeah, probably not. It'd be easy enough to get rid of him. Give me a minute. I will. This is it down here, right? Yeah, that's it. And Crocto will walk with you the two there, and then after you do that, come around like this other corner just to keep watch somewhere down this way. Perception check, both of you. Very good. Very good. You hear voices in this room next door. And now, Kath, you hear them in the other room nearby, too. You hear sort of groans and basic conversation, people waking up for the day. So we're going to have to make this pretty fast. So, and looking at this guy, there's like nothing that feels, you know, that kind of just makes feels off or anything like that. He just looks like a regular homeless guy. Yeah, he looks pretty normal. All right. Other than he's unbelievably comfortable. He's built mm -hmm. a sort of 
makeshift couch out of a dead body, trash, and old tattered clothing. It's quite genius. All right, so I'll come up and kind of crouch down next to him and shake him gently. Hey, hey Grandpa. Grandpa. He goes, I'm 31. I'm sorry. You humans kind of look a lot alike to me. I just give the, oh, this little, like, kid, 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 smile. <laughs> I, I, you You're still like in fist, by the way, though, Kath. Uh, I, I would have, I would have shaken. The, I would have dropped. The, you want to the, drop the really invis? Fast. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He hey, squints uh, at you through sleepy eyes and goes, "Oh, one of them furries. We're all probably out at all hours, yiffing each other all over the place. Just uh, yiff, 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 left, yiff, left, yiff to the right." Uh, you know, you, you look like you. Could I know what the eat. kids do. You look like you use something to eat, so I just want to kind of be nice, and I'll offer him a gold piece. Why don't what you get that? yourself something to eat? Oh, it's one cheeseburger. Thank you, my lord. Wow. He takes a the gold, gold piece, piece and rolls over and goes back a, to sleep. A gold piece is a lot of money. It's a lot of money for, the, for that oh, he level. Took it. He took it. All right. You know, I, I was trying to be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Uh, full dual wield sneak attack. <laughs> I'm not that bad. <laughs> All right, old man. I, I was trying to be nice, but you know, there's gonna be some business going on here, and you got two choices. You either take my gold piece and leave, or someone's gonna get hurt, and it's not gonna be me. You understand? Ooh, roll an intimidate check or a bluff check for you. Yeah. <laughs> You kind of change your tone, get slightly darker, but do convey the message that this is his last chance to leave without succumbing to physical harm of some type or another. And he kind of rolls partially back over and squinch at you and goes, I hear you, young man. He picks up, looks at his gold piece, waddles off around the corner. You hear him bang on this nearby door. Hey, you lot. Let's go down to the bar. I'm buying. And you hear the door open. You hear a bunch of voices and feet shuffling out. And they head to the bar at 7 in the morning. Hell yeah. All right. Once they leave, Olbrin, if you do, do a detect magic, please, just to make sure... Uh, whatever that trap was didn't get reset. Okay. Olbrin, you're gonna head down there and go around the corner what and cast that for him? That? Yep. Shall do. Crocta, as yeah, you're uh, watching that I roll <laughs> Uh, no, you look like a fucking cockroach. Alright, that's... It, literally, when you're buzzing through the city as a cockroach, if anyone sees you, they go, like little kids see you and go, look, mommy, a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's no fucking it's, insects in this city. So, yeah, like, as I see these guys, I'm going to like quickly, without flying, but I'm going to be trying to walk ahead of them around the corner. Well, you can, I mean, as a bug, you're so small and you really look like a bug. That you can just zzz down the street and most people will not react to your presence. Okay. So yeah, she'll do that quickly and tell them, hey, guards, coming down the way. Uh, it's, don't look suspicious, I guess. Don't be suspicious. What will the party do? Be suspicious. Don't be suspicious. What will um, the party's just, like, laser and reaction be? Against the wall and just, you know, just laser. Cockdust okay. is going to climb up the wall, like, towards the ceiling. Or towards the roof. Hmm. Actually, I would do the same. I'll, cli I'll climb up. <laughs> the less people that are sitting around in a group, the less suspicious we'll be overall. 
Ulfred, that room you've just ducked into smells unbelievably bad. It smells like seven unwashed people have spent the <laughs> night in there for the last year or two. That's fine. He's <laughs> <laughs> gonna bask in the smell. I'm probably small word. just gonna lay up against the wall. Act like she was sleeping. Luna, they... One of them definitely looks at your sword and they step over and go, Hey, you got a permit for that? She like opens her eyes and goes, It's not tech anymore. And she literally shows it to him and shows all the, you know, parts of it that's no longer tech. They look and go, Looks like tech to me. They roll their non existent knowledge engineering and go, what if I just call the Technic League right now? One of them pulls a little whistle out from under his neck and holds it up to his mouth. He's, he says, 20 gold or I blow the whistle on you right now, chum. She hands him the 20 gold. Nice doing business with you. They keep walking. Once, once they're clear. Okay. Did Olbrin detect any magic what on the door? What is that? What the fuck is that? What is that? You, my God. <laughs> Stop. I just keep studying it. You monster. <laughs> it is radiating magic, but not as potent as you would think, given that Croctaw said it was heavily trapped. Hmm. Any guesses of what it might be? It definitely some magic has existed here or been used, but you don't detect much active aura right now. I don't really detect much nomcast, but I can't guarantee it's not still booby trap, bud. All right, if you guys want to sit back, I'll uh, I'll hit it and see what happens. I mean, I'm willing to blow a dispel on it if you if you want to play it real safe. Now you said it's not heavily. That means if it, anything does happen, it's it'll probably be okay. Okay. I mean, it can't be the tower all over again, right? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> if you get uh, shot no. with a fucking arrow trap again, almost as die. Play, as player baits the GM. <laughs> <laughs> you see a little strange circular vacuum. Scoot out from under the wall <laughs> behind you. Where the Hollow smashes it with a great sword. <laughs> Luna start... just smashes it herself. I will start with a perception check for okay. physical traps. You don't find it. Alright. And then I will go for the disarm. Okay. Or disable device to unlock. Disable the device to unlock. You unlock the door. As you open... Hang on. Oh, Don't sorry. jump in there just yet. As you open the door, you are greeted with a wave of stench of death. And you immediately almost gag. Like, roll me a fourth save. Not bad. Let's see. You find a shocking number of blast marks and blackened body parts, blackened bones laying in this strange little spot between these two doors. And the the stench of death almost makes you throw up, but you you hold it off. Don't quite park your lunch immediately. Hey, Obrin, that uh, that detect spell still going, right? Yeah. 
Don't check your don't quick. need to roll it again. <laughs> you son of a bitch. You're just burning your spell slot. You're just meme it. Uh, it's a cantrip. I can do it all oh, day. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Yeah. If I yeah, add it can to my it all day. sheet, will that also have the moments? Yeah, oh, you, you need it again? Uh -huh. Got it. What? I can oh, just shut the sound off. We are not gonna play it that way. What do you got, Nubcath? Uh, looks like uh, might be another uh, or trap room. Uh, I just want to make sure there's not anything magical before I start stepping in. Do I detect any more magic, Toby? Or do I feel like it's still dissipated? You detect past magic, and it looks like it's all pretty well faded. What you're picking up is that these are these are corpses of a number of people who tried to get through this area, and they were killed here, and by your estimation, probably looted. They're all in funny poses, says Nomcat. They all look like they've been sifted through. And then their bodies were left here on purpose. Like as a warning. Still nothing active, though? Nope. I don't know that I can tell. Alright. I will still double check for any other traps. Okay. You don't find it. Alright. I move ten foot, four, five foot forward. I check again. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not gonna. Yeah, go you've checked this area. Time. I'll give you this area. Yeah, no, we're not doing it that way. <laughs> that is the that is the old way. We don't do that here. We must remember the old ways. Yes, and I, honor them <laughs> so that we can never repeat them. All right. Uh, is this the uh, door Disable. locked? Disable. Yeah, it looks like it's locked. All right. <laughs> Should we all enter Nomcath or hang back and let you do some more work? Uh, hang back just in case. Okay. Gives me room to dodge if I need to, since it's so narrow in here. You unlock it. You open to see a, let's see, this is 30 foot west to east. It is 35 foot north to south. There are double doors on the east wall. It is a warehouse full of boxes and barrels. It's impeccably clean. There are continual light torches on the wall that illuminate it perfectly. It looks like a lovely little spot, honestly. Does it look like lived in or worked in? Not recently, but it's definitely got some sort of... It's either been cleaned today by the cleaning staff, which the doors suggest that's not the case. Or it has some enchantment on it to prevent it from accumulating dust, because it looks well, like I meant it's more been. What's that? I meant more along the lines of not necessarily clutter, but you know, items that would imply that someone might have set this place up to stay a while. You know, place to sleep, uh, shelves for stuff. I don't see anything like that. It literally just looks like a, a warehouse, and most of the boxes are open and emptied. You can see crowbars and other tools here to open things. The barrels have largely been emptied. This looks like a warehouse that someone took everything out of and then left. It's sort of cluttered, but everything's very clean. Yeah. All right, you guys can come in. I think it's safe in here. Ulfren, you can come out of your uh, homeless room. Maybe like. But I was just being co getting cozy. I mean, things all right. Fine. Looks like there's something over here. Yeah, there is a shelf with a few odds and ends on it. First thing you notice, Nomcath, is there is a set of thieves' tools wrapped up. It's a complete set sitting on the counter here. And there are. Why is that number that's supposed to be more than that? Fixing that. There are little blue bags that say Everkeeps on them in both common and uh, Hallet dialect. And they look like they are 
sealed little blue bags of some kind of snacks. And then there are, uh, there's supposed to be four of these. Let me update the file. There are four arrows that are the strangest looking arrows you have ever seen. They, the arrowheads are three times bigger than a normal arrowhead. And the construction of the arrow is such that it's so heavy, it's like a brick. And you'd think a normal bow probably couldn't even fire it. It's just a very strange design. There's four of those. There's some money scattered here and there. And then Ulfred has found the door to the south. All right, do we all want to close the door? Close the door, so. Yeah, let's close the door here. Just oh, you so came I... to look at the bungus. Is that what we're mm -hmm. referring to? All loot piles now. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Good. I might take. Can I take those shafts? <laughs> I'm going to find out some way to put them on an arrowhead, and I'm going to fire it. They look like they Maybe. are arrows, specifically just not for a normal bow. Uh, spellcraft bow. do anything to, to discover what those are, Toby? Uh, yeah, they are custom-made plus-one magic arrow shafts designed for a huge bow. Primary focus of the enchantment place on these missiles is to ensure they survive being fired. I mean, I mean, you're welcome to have them if you want. Those, those uh, thieves tools will be valuable in the right hands. Takala, I know you traded away the orc proficiency, but those are orc hornbow made arrows. They're made for an even bigger orc hornbow orc hornbow than those usually are. It is a special special thing, but you've seen arrows like that before. I'm gonna look at those. Uh, do I recognize the, uh, some kind of maker's mark? Normally tribes will include some kind of special thing, so you know who made them. You can roll me, uh, you don't buy knowledge history probably, so let's just do a wisdom check. Okay. Pretty good. It was not a tribe that you were affiliated with yourself, and you think it was probably one of, like we mentioned about um, Luna's bow earlier. There were tribes that were renowned for their archers and their archery, and the bow that Luna carries was from a tribe that was known for their stealth, their cleverness, their like tactical brilliance on the battlefield. They were renowned scouts and hunters rangers, things like that, which is something the, the Kelids and the Half-Orcs, the Numerians generally revere. Now, these are from another clan renowned for their archers, but only a couple examples. It's They had a few archers that preferred to make bows out of this beast horn, like a wildebeest horn, like a seven foot wide rack of horns from this impossibly dangerous animal. And the bow was huge and heavy and unwieldy, and it took an incredible strength to even pull it. And these arrows are sort of a half-orcish Numerian barbarian design. You think they fit probably that clan's ancestral weaponry. Right, so uh, Tukal will just share that. Mm, they must have joined... Uh joined around here. Are they gobbling us all up? Yeah, you know that your clan was one of the few, you know, maybe 10 or 15 percent of the Numerian barbarian clans were not absorbed by the Black Sovereign's army a hundred years ago. So, would uh, my character recognize the bag of stuff? Don't think so. You may have seen arrows like that before, but... No, I'm talking... Uh, no, not the arrows. Oh. The bag. The Everkeeps. The Everkeeps. The Everkeeps. 
This is a trail ration that never expires. Yeah, you've had these before. Delicious and nutritious snack can maintain the body with carbs, proteins, vitamins, and minerals. Enjoy the sweet and spicy taste as you trudge through the barren wasteland. Using the finest ingredients, masterful cooking and preparation techniques, and dark magics. We craft this incredible portable meal you can rely on. You will expire before ever keeps expire. <laughs> She's like, I love these things. They never they, go bad. They are potato chips that survive the nuclear apocalypse. They will. Hell yeah. Survive. She'll take the potato chips. They look like little twisty, curly things, like little pork rinds. Nowhere on the bag does it say what they're made of. Nor will we ever. But she doesn't care. But they are deep fried. You know that shit. You know they're deep fried. I don't know. Luna took Luna. some. Ulfred took some. Nomcat took the thieves' tools. He's staying on target. I'm gonna I'll take a couple more. I'll take the money. It's not <laughs> shit, so Croctaw isn't interested, says Tokala. Nah. Although, I could not go in there as a roach and take some shit. Make it better for all of Or make one. <laughs> Did you say you snagged the money, Olbrin? Yep. <laughs> Anybody stop him? Let's see, no, that's 500, fine. 800, that puts you up to 802. Uh, let's see, we'll zero that. There we go. All right, party gets loot. Amazing loot. So obviously the door to the east is out. Let's check that door to the south. Uh, okay, we could also just open it. <laughs> so Kala, you, said, you said try it. <laughs> you see a short hallway leads into a 15 foot wide by 10 foot north to south uh, room with a desk, a continual flame sort of candle on it, and a uncomfortable looking chair sitting in front of it. There are other things in the room. There's a book on the desk along with some money. And there are some other shiny objects. I'll take, I'll take the money. Well. I'll take the money. You take all the money. Okay. Olbrin just takes all the money. Okay. How much did I get? You got another 650 gold. And you got... 15 silver discs, which puts you up to 19. You are, are rich. The par whole party saw you do it. It was not very subtle. So I'm like 1,402, is that right? You are at 1,457 gold and 19 platinum, which in, in Iron Gods is silver discs. You guys in here, uh, Nomcath, roll me a perception check. Or anybody checking out the book, really. I'm looking at the book. I would actually call Go Mount Cast over to it. Go ahead, Karta. Yeah. Wow. This is a mediocre rolls, boys. Five, two, three, seven, seven. Huh. Is that all of you? Alfred, roll a perception check, please. So let's see, let's retrace our steps here. Luna picks up a book and says, the pages are stuck together. Hand it to Olbrin, who says, yeah, they're stuck together. And hands it to Nomcat, who says, yeah, the pages are definitely stuck together. Hands it to Crocta and goes, but why are they stuck together? But then Tokala snatches it out of his hands and goes, it's just some dumb book anyway. Who reads this shit? And he throws it over his shoulder and Ulfred catches it and opens it up and realizes that it is a secret compartment that contains sketch pages of a terrifying looking nightmare like figure that will instantly remind you all of the dominion of the black of their mind flares and there is also a map of the scar of the spider that looks very much like the one I think Croctaw is carrying mm. yeah I think I have 
In the other chest, you will find a Starfall Officer's Badge. You will find a Tech Carrier Badge, which allows you to legally carry certain amounts of tech, and a Technic League Agent Badge. Cool. What's that for? Is that like an FBI badge? It is a higher grade... You guys will make your checks. It is a ring of protection plus two, amulet natural armor plus two, as long as you wear it prominently. <laughs> <laughs> and it is also a Technic League item of station of someone who is very, very high ranking in the Technic League. The tech carrier badge could be useful. They if you get stopped by the Technic League, it does allow you to be carrying a certain amount of tech. Although, if you are, you know, blasting around with your rocket boots and your chainsaws and shit, and you have one of these, you probably still get hauled in for questioning. But since so I'm base, I basically am tech. I feel like I should take that. I don't think you would qual. I don't think you would qualify. Uh, we need to figure out exactly how much tech this would protect us from, and then we can figure out who who would best wear it. Cassandra, do you know? I don't. She says I haven't been to this city since they fucked it up. Uh, we can ask the the mock. Then you guy. hear from we'll inside Nomcat's backpack. She goes, "Fucking capitalist! They fucking ruin everything. This so fucking <laughs> Oh, better safe than sorry, anyway." I'll carry in it for now, anyway. I'll take the officer's badge. Because I, I can see where that might be useful. With those, the shiny bits and bobs? That's the shiny bits and bobs. There's two silver pieces in here, if you want. I'll take them. You want the silver pieces, huh? Yep. Okay. Put Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Puts me to 21. 339 silver. 339 silver. Actually, I have to revise this. This is what's on your person. Um, yeah. I might have a problem here. No, you're okay. You're still underweight. I remember I cut this deal with everybody where when you have access to your bank, like you're in Torch, you can have weightless currency. When you're out here in the field, you got to account for the weight of it. Not a problem. I have 1.7 pounds of currency on me. I have, too point bad. Nine, I have point nine pounds. Conversely, Ulbrin has 21 pounds of currency on him now. <laughs> yeah. I got I've 7. got 7.1 pounds of currency. I've got, a, I've got a plan, guys. I promise. I promise. You have a tattoo of mule back cords or you'd be laying on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of my plan. Don't worry. Okay. Uh, search the desk, or did we do that already? Yeah, this is all stuff scattered across the oh, desk okay. and around the okay. room. And there's nothing in the drawers? Mm -mm. Gotcha. You don't Sorry, find it's 5.7 it. pounds. My bad. 5.9. Some useful things, but uh, at least now we know where this one is if we need to, if we need a uh, place to hide. Yeah. Cassandra, do you think this was Theris' place? Yes, it is. She says, the east door is trapped heavily both directions. Avoid it. We can leave that one alone. There. I don't see a need to go open it. At Let's least just leads outside, you said? Yeah. Okay. I said, it gives us another place we can go to if we need to go someplace closer. Overall, although I think it's best we keep using the other uh, places our base of operation. 
there's gonna be too many eyes here we should only come here if, if necessary what do you guys think it's it's never bad to have a couple places to go yeah I'm okay with either way all right so backup place here let's go ahead and go talk to the mockery okay they owe us so we okay. head out and I will lock the doors behind me okay Are we still all disguised? Are we need new disguises? Oh, you've been in here a while. So need new disguises then? Yeah, you've been here yeah. in here at least thirty or forty minutes, searching and carefully checking for traps. Okay. Should be okay. I'm Kath for you. For me. Anybody I else? Lend my uh, rainbow garb to someone if they want, because I haven't been using it to disguise myself very much. Give it to it's the okay. collar. Yeah, and it has... I mean, I'll lose some resist, but it's okay. It's just temporary. With oh, the, uh... Traveling around. Alfred, you need one too, don't you, buddy? What's that? Disguise. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. And then there's my That's disguise. Good. Check, Toby. That give thing works, right? I hope. <laughs> the it give might. button. It's a cloak, Tokala. Yeah, I just tried to give it to you, Takala. Did you get it? Mm, I'll check my inventory. Yes. Yes, I do. Okay. Cool. All right. I'll take uh, take off the cloak and put that one on. Yeah, it has some other abilities, too, if you want to take a look. Luna's over here a ninja. <laughs> you forget she's with us. Okay. So we're going to go meet with Mockery? Yep. Okay. You still have a comm unit to talk to him? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you do that first, or do you just go there? Uh, I definitely really brief message hey we're coming in kind of thing he says uh, one o'clock all right so we'll okay. we'll kill some time browsing them all <laughs> <laughs> okay you guys visit starfall scrolls star juice Plenty of cool potions there. Starfall Scrolls has all kinds of fun stuff. And general store is available to you here. Let me know if you need to sell anything. And let's see. I need the map called the Mall of Numeria. Whole party's coming in this time? Yep. Okay. Actually, uh, do you guys think it'd be good for me? Like, do we think we're at risk of being spotted at this place? Or no. Should I do the... No? Okay. No. It's... Well, I mean, no more... Than... I, I would say no more than traveling around in general, so a, a certain level of precaution, but I don't feel a heightened need of precaution in here. Okay. Yeah, and then I mean, Crocodile will just like hang out around the entrance anyway, but I'm not gonna do this well. So yeah, I won't go in with you. You're not going in? Nah, is it like a secret entrance type of thing or Yeah. So like if I saw something I wouldn't easily be able to go to them and tell them? No. 
It was. I, I remember it was like three, at least three or four secret doors deep. Okay. Well, fine. Never mind. I'll go with you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You guys meet him at Starfall Blades, and he yep. walks you into the secret meeting room at the center of Mockery's Lair in the Mall of Numeria. He, let's see, how sharp are you feeling today, sir? Pretty fucking sharp. He stops and stares, and you see one weapon go, one hand go to a weapon on his belt, a blade, when he looks at the cockroach buzzing around he says oh it's with you yes okay. up to this point luna will literally take off her homework for the first time since she's been in starfall he when you take off your helmet and reveal your undisguised face he sort of lifts his head at you and says, Luna Kresnik, you wouldn't remember me, but I know you. I do, I, I did, I do remember you. He says, he walks over and does the standard, like, big grab by the wrist barbarian handshake and yep. violently shakes your arm and says, Dralmok, I'm surprised you remember me. Apparently I wasn't subtle enough back then. No. What's that on the side of your head? Are you uh, android? No. You look closely, and he has a sort of strange metal plate on the side of his head and a line across the front of his head, and he says, My skull was cut open, and the only thing the doctor could find to replace the piece of skull that was missing was this chunk of metal. So it's stuck in my head forever now. No tech, just a piece of metal? It doesn't look like it. It doesn't look technologically enhanced. It literally does just look like maybe magic was used to regrow the skin around it so that it would fuse to his head and, and his body wouldn't reject it. But yeah, it looks like a chunk of metal holding the side of his head together. Mm. So... uh. We didn't keep the uh, alchemist's head or anything like that, did we? Oh, uh, yeah, we did. We did keep his head? Mm hmm. It's in this bag of holding, I believe. All right. Oh so, goodness. well, we got to bring proof, right? So we uh, pull out the bag of holding and I will pull the head out of the bag of holding. Figured you'd want proof. He doesn't look grossed out, he looks angry. In fact, he leans forward and. <laughs> spits on the head and says, you son of a bitch, not more than you deserve. <sighs> he sort of masters himself quickly and says, you've done a wonderful deed. This man yeah. has poisoned our Lord for oh. years. Yeah, he was a piece of work, all right. He kind of rubs his chest a little bit. Uh, we uh, burnt the place down, tried to destroy as much as we could. So nobody else can continue his work. He looks honestly surprised. He says, I I thought you'd come back and say you'd found him or found the secret entrance or maybe vandalize something. I, I didn't dream you would come back with this man's head. To have this this monster off the board means we could go for bigger things sooner. Who was he? Yeah. Uh, Doc Hellbroth is his only name around here. Alchemist, drug designer, drug seller. He funnels this horrible golden liquid up to the palace that our old friend, he looks at Luna, uh, our old friend is very, very addicted to. We need to get him fixed with that stuff. Get rid of it. If you found any of it in the lab, I hope you smashed it and burnt it. That stuff is so dangerous. Very well, we burnt. We burnt what we could. We unfortunately, to just for it to be open and honest about it, we let the most recent delivery go through. I, I didn't want to risk 
uh, his guards coming in when we were salting stuff, and I figured that would be the safest time is after they took a delivery. He holds up his hand and says, they've been delivering that filth to him week in, week out for years. I'm just glad you've you've curtailed his future supply. Not too many people in the city can make that crap or know what they're handling. He says, if you... If you all are ready, and I can tell you are resolved, you maybe you each have your own reasons for hating the Technic League, but I have some information. It's not something I was going to share with you, but given what you've done here, I think you deserve a crack at it if you want it. It's heavy. Oh, very heavy. That's what, that's what we're here for. Before we get into that, that sending spell... That he was able to get off, where do you think that went? Undoubtedly to the Technic League compound, I would think. I don't know which of the captains it will have gone to. What do you think their recourse would be? That's... The worst part about the Technic League is their unpredictability. Any one of them will stab each other in the back over anything. They are all constantly vying for control. It's the real weakness of the organization, but then they're all a bunch of extremely skilled and competent spellcasters, so they have enough strength to compensate for this. But at any given moment, they are all jockeying to advance themselves in the organization, their power levels, their wealth, and most importantly, their tech. And that's what the other thing is about. I think we have a shot to confront or even assassinate one of the Technic League captains in the next several days. Sounds like a good place to start. Okay, what are you thinking? He says, there is a smuggler, an arms dealer, from over in the nice part of town. And sometimes he comes across something so valuable He's unwilling to sell it through the proper channels because then he'd pay a tax. Or there's always a chance that the Technic League, if one of the top captains saw it, they might just demand it. They might take it from him and pay him a fraction of what it's worth. And so rather than have that happen and lose out on all that money, he's putting out feelers that tells me he's going to sell on one of the night markets. Now, the night markets move around couple times a week they're rarely in the same place twice you only know an hour or so before they meet where they're going to be and they're very often in the sewers or caverns underneath the city or other secret locations and people meet up to buy and sell whatever you can't sell on the surface during the day with the Technic League around so based on this guy's and his name is Baron Drund D-R-U-N-D, Drund. He's rich. He's heavily defended with the best guards that money can buy in this city. And he wants to sell something big. And from what I understand, from my other contacts, one of the captains wants to buy it without the other captains knowing they've done so. Which Who is that? The Shade is one of the Technic League captains. That's her name. Nobody knows what her real name is. But the Shade is looking for a meet with the Baron. It'll probably be at a night market. It'll be in the next couple days. If I hear of when and where it is, and I tell you guys that location and time, you will have a chance to confront one of the Technic League captains without any of the other Technic League captains being there, because she won't want them there. And probably with less guards than you'll see them any other time. What kind of spellcasters are these two? Baron, I don't know. He's just a rich asshole, as far as I know, but he survived a long time. He's probably got some tricks up his sleeve. The Shade? Not much is known about any of the Technic League captains from where I sit. They're all wizards to me, but I've heard that she's hideous, disfigured, hairless, 
scary glowing eyes, wears a long flowing black or blue cloak. That's all I know. Okay. If we wanted to dis so say we take out these two captains or even one of them, if we wanted John to just not a captain, he's just a just a merchant. oh just a okay. What do you think would be the best way to disguise the encounter so that they don't think it's a third party? They think these two guys just got too greedy and had it out with one another. He says, "I can give you the names and the vaguest visual description of the technical league captains, but and I'm kicking myself for this now." When I was over on that side of town, when I lived that life, I didn't pay him really very much mind. I wish I had. Now I struggle for every little nugget of information I can get about any of them. Okay. If you have some way to learn more about one of them or all of them and you somehow try to frame killing or capturing the shade on one of the others that could lead to a lot of internal damage for them I know they won't hesitate to rip each other apart for just about any reason okay okay so you'll dig around and try to find the location of this meat you just keep that communicator charged up and on you okay as soon as I know you'll know and you can act if you if you feel brave enough to. Can you they get your hand? Defenseless. Go ahead. They won't be defenseless, I tell you that. Don't expect them to be. Can you get your hand on some scrolls? Yeah. Uh, he sells most potions of cure. He does remove curse, blindness, disease. He can do scrolls of disguise, non-detect, non-detect communal... You can do a wand of disguise, wand of non-detect. Um, if you, he says, if you need a special order through the scroll shop here, you know, let me know what it is, and I'll clear him to get it for you. Major Sanctum, if you can get that, I'd appreciate it. Hmm. He says, let me see, scroll spell. Let's see if we do a scroll of this. Yeah, he said there'll be a bit of a markup. That's not one they like to part with, and I'll have to go to the east side for it. But if you want it, I will send someone to have it have it here within a day or two what do you think the damage will be he says i don't think i could it's normally 900 i don't think i can do it for less than 14 because i have to hush a lot of mouths i immediately hand him 1400 i give him just all my gold <laughs> okay take my money boom you now have 50 gold <laughs> okay says all right i'll let you know when it's here okay Next time you hear from me it'll be to tell you that the scroll's here or that i know where the meat is and when it is and i'm not gonna broadcast that information understood uh quick question toby just to make sure this yeah. is in a, a dm typo the wand of non-detection and wand of disguise self is said it's free oh that's just a bug yeah okay that's just a bug i don't know why it's saying that Wand of Disguise Self should be 750 gold. Wand of Non-Detection should be 6,050 gold. Wand of Oath of Anonymity should be 375. I don't know why my, my little uh, shop calculator thing is goofing up. I mean, the Non-Detection would be really, really useful for these ambush things. Well, I've got Camino Non-Detection. You already have that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I was just thinking getting them as wands would be burn less of your resources. It's, I mean, yeah, it, it's there, but I've got, what, 
eight fourth level spells, so. Okay. And how much was the disguise self one? Three seventy five. Self is seven fifty. Oh, 750, sorry. Wait a second. I have... How many charges do I have on this? Where's the one Connor gave you? The copy... As I was double-checking the... Uh, oh, I got 45 charges on that. Never mind. I didn't I didn't know how many charges I had on that one. So, yeah, I would be... I would just, I would just use that. I, I have no problem with you burning the resources on our, our more RP days, but on planned combat, so I want to burn as little of your resources as possible, you know? For sure. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Uh, at the very least, if you get us that information, we will find it and see what's there and make a decision at the time. If it's going to be too much for us, we may just back off and try and gather information. But we'll come armed for bear on, and on the assumption that we're going to make an assault. He says if you kill one of them... You'll have done more good for this place than anybody else has in a hundred years. And if you kill one of them, make another one, the other ones think that one of the others did it. Who knows where that could lead? Yeah, I want to, I want to, but I'm also not going to take stupid risks. He says, my information says in two or three days, this sale is going to happen. So you've got a couple days to think about it and gather information. Yeah. Um, if we'll we wanted this. to start gathering information on these asses, where would you recommend starting? He says, you know, they don't talk to anybody outside their organization much. They don't tell us dumb barbarians shit. Um, they only talk to each other and they're damn gearsmen. Gearsmen? Yeah. They got gearsmen robots that do whatever they say. Pretty much. Sometimes they disobey. It's a little scary when they do. I've got a few ideas of what we can do. Which reminds me, you might actually know the answer to this question. And I'll pull out the tech badge. Mm-hmm. How much of this how much would this protect if somebody was wearing it? Uh you have the tech badge? Yes I do. Okay. But so basically I'm trying to figure out how much tech can we wear openly and not draw attention. Technic League, the actual Technic League badge itself? No, we got the... You have the badge. You don't have the tech license thing. Someone I don't? Else has I, thought that. I, I thought I grabbed it. Oberyn has it. Okay. Not Oberyn, but... Uh, Ulfred. Uh, Ulfred. Ulfred. Okay. What do I have? You have the tech badge. Mm-hmm. He says, this is a... He sort of points at the language on it. Uh, class D. This is a Class D tech badge. And it's not really worth anything, but I'm putting a value on it of 5,000 gold because it certifies you to carry up to 5,000 gold-ish worth of tech. Okay. Which, in you all's experience, is like one laser pistol. Tech is way overvalued in Numeria, generally. (laughs) Uh, What about the officer's badge? That labels you as a Technic League officer, and as such, if you're not and you're wearing it, you are just an absolute public enemy of the state. I have it, but I definitely don't have it on. Yeah. But what was the other one we found? Having the physical badge, and especially with the copycat uh, uh, wand, it'd be nice to have a physical badge to flash at somebody while looking like somebody in the Technic League. True. Okay. Anything else? No, I think that's about it. I've got some ideas for what we might do to try and get some information. But, uh, yeah, it's going to be fun. Sarcasm speaking. Okay. Done here? Yep. Yeah. Get that scroll as quick as you can. I'll try to have it by tomorrow night. Thank you. Okay, when where we're... is the party going to spend the night, and then we shall pause for the week? Um, I would say go back to our dead block. Again, the safe house over here has too many eyes. If we go, if we go in and out too much, people will notice. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. And on the way back, 
in the uh, drow sign, sign language uh, to uh, Ulbrin. What's that spell you want? What's it do? <laughs> I'll explain. Mage's Sanctum. We can set it up and I can study it, make a circle, and I can teleport us there and no one can find us. So we have a good hideout somewhere in the city where they can't scry and try to find us. Good idea. Make just sanctum prevents anyone from it creates a barrier around a tight area and if you're outside the barrier you can't see in, you can't hear any noise from within, you can't use any scrying spells or detect anyone within. And so they're sort of tele Port tracking and teleport detection system they use over the whole city would not pick up any teleports into or out of a mage's private sanctum. And Olbrin, if he had enough money, could make one permanent. How much money is it going to cost him to do that? 12,000 gold. Holy! We've got a few items we could sell. I don't think I got 12,000. Out of that. Well, if we knock a couple off these wizard bitches, we might have some more gold. Yeah. Or we just send you and start ripping people off, Norm Cavs. <laughs> I mean, I, I, Wait, you know, yeah. hey, Obrin, is that a spell that you can possibly get later on? I can, but, you know, if I can get a scroll of it, why spend a spell slot on it? Yeah, because you only need to do it once with the permanent, right? Yeah, if we do it permanent, I really only need it a few times. Typically, you're only going to cast Mage's Private Sanctum two or three times a campaign. Although, if you had it as a spell, I guess you could drop it every night wherever you slept. Because it lasts like a day. Yeah, we'll but see. Yeah, they're a, they're relatively affordable. Sorcerer, yeah, if I was a sorcerer, I wouldn't want to devote a spell slot to it. If I was a wizard, I totally would. Um, yeah, 30 foot cube per level. So that's 390 cubic feet. Uh, last 24 hours, and then the permanency effect is 12,500 gold. Requires the caster be a minimum of 13th level, which you are. Then you can put a permanent symbol of pain on it, so whenever Tokala teleports in. Oh! <laughs> and then I splash caustic blood everywhere. Oh no! <laughs> oh, the combo. And then I just dispel it. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna pause there and bring you guys back to the main screen. Real good spy and RP progress, and everybody's all leveled up. Although if you have any more decisions you think you want to change or wiggle around on, that's totally fine with me. And uh, we'll see you next time, okay? I believe I now have 17 first level spells. Uh, What? Why would you? No. Because I'm just a total Freeze. badass wizard. You no. know? Yeah. No. no. Okay. Well, I mean, okay. you can use your high level spell slots to cast first level spells, so technically you have like 35 first level spells. Well, yeah. He stopped the spell slot itself so they could fit more spells into it. Sure. <laughs> I cast double spells. I love slots. that, like. I love that logic. Sure. Makes total sense.